Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to look at something that's a little bit, a little bit unusual because people keep on asking about it, but they seem to think that there's something magical about it. It's not magic. It's just science. It's just facts. But we've got to look at it in a straightforward way. You can spend hours on the internet looking up this sort of thing. Well, now you don't need to because I'll give you the answers. What we're looking at today is this. If you notice, there's a difference between these two tapes. I'll show you what it is. That one's a Type 2, and it says 70 microseconds. And then the other one is a Type 1, and it says 120 microseconds. Also says bias normal, and on the other one it said bias high. There's a load of conflicting myths going around on the internet about recording on one setting and playback on another and all the rest of it, which isn't really necessary because it's not the way it should be done. If you spent a lot of time on the internet, you could actually look around and you can find all these tutorials on what an arse is, and what a time constant is and how it works. But uh, have you got 25, 30 hours just to find out how it is? Or, on the other hand, you can just listen to me and I'll, I'll tell you what it is in simple terms. It may not be totally accurate, but it'll be good enough to understand what we're doing. The expression microseconds for time constant on these two tapes is actually partly marketing, partly science, partly convenience, and I'll tell you how in a minute. We, here we have a time constant circuit. You've got a resistor and a capacitor, battery and a graph. If you watch what goes on, you can see what's occurring. The voltage on the capacitor is taking time to rise. This is set by the value of the components. It's a simple calculation. T equals R times C. I've just saved about 23 hours and 58 minutes because that's all you need to know about that particular part. What comes now is application. How do we actually use this? And the answer is hiss removal. This shows the ideal frequency response of a sound system. However, this shows what you get if you don't have any correction on a tape head. On here you can see there are two brown traces, a dark brown and a light brown. The light brown illustrates type one and the dark brown type two. And you can see the pattern's not exactly the same. Just to remind you, at this point, we're not talking about bias or anything else, just equalization. If you recorded on this, in this condition, you would get a reasonable recording with the correct bias and everything, but you'd get everything above certain frequencies would just get lost in the hiss because the hiss would be so big. What you want to record is this green line there. It's going to be nice and straight and flat. But what you actually get is this green line here. So what you do is you warp it up here to match that for a type 1 or bring it along and you warp it over a little bit later for a type 2 and that way you get this effect, a nice straight line. What you've actually done is recorded the high frequencies a bit louder so that when you turn down the hiss, you turn down the high frequencies, but it all comes out of being about right. How did they decide on it? Well, they talked to each other, they decided they wanted to make the two different, and they went for something that was probably about the best they could and standardised it. Is it the best that it needs to be? Yes. Is it as good as it could be? No. The important thing here is to realise that the two are different, so they are not totally compatible but they're not that different that you can't listen to one or the other. You just have to alter your tone controls. Hiss is caused by the granules of magnetic particles going past the head and producing a signal. Different sorts of tapes have different sized granules, so the hiss is different. Type 2 granules are finer, so the hiss is less. The other thing altered on this is bias. Bias is what actually puts the sound onto the tape. Well, you just think of it this way. If it's a high bias, it means it's got more push to get it on the tape than if it's a standard bias. So CRO2, Chrome, they're high bias tapes and you have to put a bit more push behind it. That's all it is. Don't get confused. But it is important that you use the right bias for the right tape. If you use the wrong bias, it will sound awful. In the old days, all decks were capable of CRO2, had a switch. Even some modern decks like this one have got controls. If you look at them on here, you've got play and record CRO to two separate switches. This modern deck though actually selects the differences for you. There's no manual switches, it's all done automatically. This is the ion playback switch circuit. You can see there, that's where the switch actually operates on and it turns on that transistor. That transistor then turns on the resistor and capacitor network which makes this amplifier change its tone controls. You saw these drawn earlier on, and now you can see them in a real circuit diagram. They are exactly the same type of components doing exactly the same type of job. 
What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the bias and the audio record characteristics. CRO2 record switch is pressed. It puts a signal onto that transistor, that transistor and that transistor. Now that one is all to do with the bias level and those two are to do with switching on these op amps. These two triangular things are amplifiers and all of those bits around it make them sound the way they do. There's two, one for each channel, left and right. Those two transistors are taking the signal down to earth and making the characteristics different. Type 1 they're off, type 2 they're on, and when they're on they change the sound. It looks complicated but it's really quite simple. So, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that there are two settings. There's high bias and there's standard bias. Those are the important ones. And then you've got the sound controls, as in the pre emphasis and de emphasis which is the technical name for making the, the characteristics correct. If you record with the wrong sound characteristics, it's not a really big problem. But if you record with the wrong bias, it's not going to work. And that's it. There's no voodoo. It's not magic. It's all just a case of... That's the way it's made to do it. All of these theories about playing it one way and recording it another, they're, all, they're not necessary. They're just people trying to make something out of nothing. If you want to get the best out of your deck, make sure the switches are in the right place, make sure your heads are clean, give yourself a treat, and enjoy it. Don't stress. Anyway, that's it for now. Catch you another time. Like, subscribe, all the rest of the good stuff. Catch you another time. Bye-bye.